Lord's dinner head, the nursery to gather Mia's favorite side dish. Step inside and understand the true horror of fruit corn. Fortis, you, you jawless arrow magnet! What are you doing back here? <coughs> what? Call me Mr. Woden the Mighty! How I pity the people of Galomere that their fate should once again be in the hands of a chump like you! Still, I suppose it's not fair to take it out on them. Take my sword, and do try not to stab yourself in the foot. You know, I've always had my doubts about you, Fortescue. You're just not carved from hero material. Oh, oh, oh.
Keep out! This gate leads to the Tomb of the Shadow Demons. There used to be a coven of witches in the caves beneath Cemetery Hill. The whole forest never smelt the same since. And the witch of the forest. Oh, it is you, Seth Fortescue. Forgive me, my lord. I have never met a real hero. <laughs> Ahem. Forgive me. Just an old lady's little joke. In truth, I am glad to see you, Seth Fortescue. I need seven pieces of amber that are hidden in the ant's nest. Bring them to me and I can grant you a special reward. I will only offer you this quest this once. Are you willing to give it a try? Sorry, didn't I mention I'd have to shrink you to the size of an insect? Now hurry back. Run, little man. If the master found it now, he would crush it like a bag. <laughs> Hark. We can hear the soldier ants approaching. Onward, and meet your tiny nemesis.
If you are brave enough to go beyond this point, you will enter the chamber of the dreaded Queen Anne. Lord of the Ants! Hold still, and I'll remove the shrink spell. Oh, lovely, lovely Amber. Here you are tonight. A wart-covered and cabbage-smelling old crone I may be, but I always keep my promises. I grant you my reward. Gaining allies in the Hall of the Heroes is the way forward. Hack, choppity chop, off with a few zombies' heads, 
and it thinks it can redeem itself in battle. You still have a long way to go to rank as the best. God, Fortescue, you must be the luckiest corpse ever to walk the face of the earth. I have something here I can lend to you. Take it or leave it, but remember, I'm only doing this for the sake of Galomir's doomed population, and not for you, you gangly buffoon! The imps of the hilltop mausoleum grew tired of the Phantom's incessant practice sessions and hid his sheet music away. Like most impish plans, this one backfired. The Phantom continues to bang the keys, but sorely lacks improvisational skills. This formidable serpent was somehow lured into a tiny chest and trapped by men working for King Peregrine. Probably it must have been a magic chest, because really, this is one huge serpent to fit in such a small box. But anyhow, the king believed he had imprisoned the evil serpent of Galamir, when in fact it was kindly serpent Lord Cole Katura that he had inboxed. Katura is probably going to have a big hug for whoever sets him free, and an ever tighter one for their enemies. Once part of the infamous Cemetery Hill Coven, Imelda was ostracized by her sisters when she refused to stop using the communal cauldron to prepare her notoriously pungent lunchtime brews. She now resides in the enchanted earth where no one complains. Or at least if they do, she just turns them into a toad and seriously, do not lick those toads. A proud and fair race, the fairies were rulers of the underground world, until that fateful day when the Ant Queen invaded their turf. Honestly, we don't know why the ants have them imprisoned, but for some reason, fairy magic doesn't seem to work against ants. Seems odd to me, but hey, I don't make the rules. Back in King Peregrine's day, imps were often kept as household servants. Sadly, those were cruel times, and many imps were treated very poorly by the masters. Really, it was no surprise when these cunning little creatures formed a secret alliance with Xerox. On the morning of the Battle of Galamir, every last one of King Peregrine's men awoke to find his house imp gone, and along with them, every last undergarment in the kingdom. 
Never before had an army's charge been so devastatingly broken before battle had even begun. Isn't nature wonderful? This beautiful family of wolves has found a happy home in the graveyard. Back in their den, six cute, squirmy little pups are waiting for good old mom and pop to return with delicious, fresh meat. Well, perhaps graveyard meat isn't the most fresh, but at least it's easily found and safe. But let me tell you, elsewhere in Galamere, vengeful farmers have hunted these majestic beasts to the point of extinction. Oh, thank goodness this last happy little family is here, amid the peace and tranquility of the graveyard, where absolutely no harm can befall them. These straw men spin to win. They have teamed up with the crows to protect their cornfield home from strangers, whom they greet with sharp spinning affection. Nothing comes easy for these poor farmers. As Galamir's population declines, so does the demand for their crops. It's no wonder they hide in haystacks. Show them some sympathy and let them stab you a couple of times, eh? Industrious, thieving imps built these powerful machines to steal crops from the farmers. Personally, I think they do better mass-producing these things and selling them to the farmers, but hey, thieves gotta thieve. These dreaded corn stalkers are utterly silent, totally invisible, and 100% deadly. They're also just about the cheapest solution a time-strapped video game developer could ever conceive to stop the player going where they're not wanted. Rejoice! They're vampire bats. Actually, they're just bats, but they bite. That's sort of vampire-y. Is this really what the ancient dragons evolved into? Their dreadful ancestors would be ashamed. Don't lick their backs. That's a good way to end up in the loony bin. No, really, just don't. Poisonous pollen protects these plants from predators. Just to be safe, they fire it at everything. Can never be too careful these days. Fascinating creatures, ants. Did you know they're as old as the dinosaurs? That they talk using chemicals? Or that they share a hive mind? And contrary to popular belief, they actually have no interest whatsoever in your pants. I always thought it was a bad idea when they put a demon on their stained glass window. Isn't that a little odd for a holy place, I said. What if a passing sorcerer brings it to life, using arcane magic, I said. But did they listen? Yes, he might have a glass jaw, but if you think shattering his dark heart is going to be easy, oh, you'd better think again. Humanity's last line of defense against the restless undead. They prevent bony beings from escaping to the land of the living. Man's best friend but not Dan's best friend. Although accustomed to letting her soldiers do all the fighting, this is one tough bug lady. She's an acid-spitting queen who will fight to her last gasp to defend the brood of insect infants incubating inside her egg sac. Oh, if only there was an airlock you could flush her out of. <laughs> 